In this Evans Tuning Tech article, we're going to show you how to build a B-series long block as well as how to, do, how to blueprint it. In order to do engine assembly and blueprinting properly, you need the right tools. Uh, I'm going to show you what tools we use to do uh, assembly with. Uh, the first tool we have here is a digital dial bore gauge. Um, next tool you're going to need is a torque wrench. This is Snap-on Digital. Um, you're going to need your common hand tools and wrenches. Um, you're going to need a ring filer to gap the rings. You're going to need a rod bolt stretch gauge tool. You're going to need machinist micrometers. And you're also going to need um, some kind of a ring compressor. These are, uh, these are ARP um, ring compressors, which are really nice. And you're also going to need um, assembly lube. The first thing I like to do when I'm assembling an engine is laying all the uh, basic engine parts out. Connecting rods, the rings, the wrist pins, the pistons, and the ring locks. And I label everything per cylinder. So I have these one, two, three, and four just so that you know when the rods attach to the piston, um, which bore it goes to. The next thing I like to do is uh, I, have a, I have a build sheet here um, with all the clearances labeled out. It's uh, several pages long. And the first thing that we have on the build sheet here is the piston diameter. Uh, using our machinist micrometer, I'm going to measure the piston at the widest point on the skirt, which is half inch, half inch up, uh, which I've already measured. And uh, we're going to look at we're going to look at the CP spec sheet and it's going to tell us that we're supposed to measure 3.3253 inch, a half inch up from the bottom of the skirt. So using my micrometer here, I'm going to measure this half inch up here and it's 3.3253 inch exactly on the dot. The next step after measuring uh, each piston a half inch up on the skirt is to just label each piston on the top so that you know um, what the exact uh, spec on the piston is and uh, then I go to my build sheet here and I write down for every every cylinder or every piston on every cylinder um, exactly what the what the clearance was on each skirt um, next step <clears throat> is to uh, to measure the cylinder bore um, on the actual sleeve on the block um, CP is calling for three and a half thousandths piston to wall clearance since this motor is going to be used and it's going to make 7,800 horsepower, um, we're going to go to a thousandths looser, so we're going to go four and a half thousandths piston to the wall. So we're going to measure the, the bore on the block to make sure we have four and a half thousandths. CP calls for three and a half pistons to the wall clearance. Uh, we're going to go with an extra thousandths of clearance to give enough room for the piston to grow uh, for the heat it's going to build with as much power. Um, so this number, instead of being 3.327, is going to be 3.328. Um, we're going to be using the digital dial bore gauge and I have my machinist micrometer set up here on the bench on the vise to be set at exactly 3.328 so I'm going to stick I'm going to stick the, the machine the uh, dial bore gauge in here and I'm going to get it rock it back and forth I get it to read pretty evenly here. And then I'm going to zero it out. So now we're set for 3.328 on the dot. The next step is to put the digital dial bore gauge into the actual cylinder wall. Um, you're going to rock it back and forth, find the average point here. And we had set it at, we had zeroed it out at 3.328. So right there, we're on 3.328. We're gonna walk it down the sleeve. You're gonna see it move just slightly, which is normal. So this sleeve is bored correctly at 3.328. Um, next. Uh, the next thing to do would be to check it on the corresponding axis um, and as long as that checks out the sleeve's true and uh, it's bored correctly and the piston wall clearance is what we're after at four and a half thousandths and you're going to move on to each corresponding cylinder after that. After checking with the dial bore gauge it's still a good idea to put the piston in the bore and just make sure that there's definitely enough clearance even though you've measured everything just by feel. Um, I'm going to put the skirt down in just kind of rock it back and forth 
Just make sure it's not too tight. The next step is to assemble the piston onto the rod. Um, so what you're going to do is, the, the deeper reliefs on the piston are the intake, the shallower are the exhaust. And you're going to see here on the rod, there's what's called a tang here on the rod. The tang is going to go to the exhaust side of the motor. So having this being on the exhaust side, you're going to have your valve relief, your intake relief, it's going to be on the opposing side of your tang. So you're going to slide your wrist pin through here, and slide it through the bushing on the rod. After you put the wrist pin into the piston here, you're going to use the retaining clip and you're going to snap it into the groove located on the outer face here. And you're going to simply push it into the bore, compress it with your fingers, snap it into place just like that. The next step is to size the rings um, for each bore. And CP provides a spec, little spec chart here. Um, I'm going to go on the looser end of both of the recommended uh, top and secondary ring gaps. Um, coincidentally, it works out to uh, 22 hundredths and 26 hundredths for the uh, top and bottom, respectively. So next, we're going to size them. The first thing to do into gapping the rings is uh, start with the top, top compression ring here. You're going to put it in the bore. You're going to use the piston and rod assembly, and you're going to square the ring up, push it down in the bore. So I usually use the top of the, the uh, piston skirt here, slide it down until it meets the deck with your fingers, square the ring up. Now that the ring is squared up, we're going to use our 2200s feeler gauge, and we're going to put it here in the bore, and you can see the gap is not open up enough to fit the feeler gauge through it. So we're going to have to pull the ring back out, file it open until it's, uh, it meets the appropriate um, gap. Using the manual ring fire here, we're going to square the ring up and we're going to grind the ring until we get the appropriate clearance. Um, this usually takes several iterations between grinding and checking it. You don't want to take too much off or you're going to have too much ring gap. So it's better to use in small increments and keep checking it. So I'm going to grind a little bit here. Okay. And now I'm going to reinstall it back in the bore. This is the fourth iteration of grinding the ring. So we're going to use the, the feeler gauge here. We're going to put it in the gap. Got a nice tight fit. And uh, everything is gapped on the top ring on the cylinder. The next thing you need to do is gap the secondary ring. Um, so we're going to square it up in the bore. It's the same exact process as the first. This has been the third time we've done the grinding on the ring. And using the feeler gauge, I'm going to check it again. Nice drag on it, and this, this ring's gapped. The last thing you need to do is check the oil rail support rings here. Um, they need to be gapped with at least uh, 15 hundredths gap. And we're going to use our feeler that's uh, 15 hundredths, and we're going to check the gap, and we have a minimum, a little bit looser than that, which is good. 